Hey everyone, Sam here, otherwise known as FPL Pricey. Today we're going to help you get set up for blank game week 18. The two teams blanking this week will be Man City and Brentford, just as a quick FYI. That will be because Man City go off to the Club World Cup. In the meantime though, let's have a look at some of the best pickups this week. So first up, I wanted to mention Richarlison. Now three goals in his last two games. No, he's not getting full 90 minute matches so far, but he's getting good minutes. He's starting the games now and he's still really good value at 6.7 million. Importantly, he's also incredibly differential at under 5% owned. 2.4% at the moment is incredibly differential. I do expect that to boost up in the next couple of game weeks, especially around game week 21 when Son Heung-min goes off to the Asia Cup for a couple of game weeks. He could be a really decent replacement for him around about then. However, if you wanted to pick him up whilst he's still differential, whilst he's still cheap, and with good fixtures over the next three, then I think that now is a pretty good time to be looking at him. Everton, Brighton and Bournemouth, I expect Tottenham to do well enough in all three of those games. And the underlying data suggests that he's going to continue his scoring streak over the next few. 0.52 XG per 90 is phenomenal for a midfielder. And as we all know, he is playing out of position as a forward in real life as well. So I would expect those returns to keep coming. Now, at the start of the season, most of of us would have maybe laughed at Richarlison as an option mainly because with our eyes we could see that he wasn't really performing in a Spurs shirt as of yet however he did come out earlier in a, a couple of game weeks ago I think and said that he was carrying a little something at the start of the season wasn't really feeling free and feeling like he was at his free-flowing best and moving correctly whereas since he's come back from injury I think he has looked a lot better a lot sharper and getting into the box in those areas in those pockets of space at the right moments for the cutbacks from wide areas and all of a sudden he looks like a really decent pickup especially at the value he's at there are a lot of midfielders in the game between six and seven million which are flattering to deceive a bit at the moment whereas Richarlison is starting to get the minutes he's getting the goals and the data is also there as well so I really like him as an extremely good differential option for the next few game weeks so there are two strikers in particular that I'd be looking at getting rid of this game week if you can and if you don't need to take a hit to do so. The first of which would be Darwin Nunez. Now, obviously, the data is still looking really good on paper, but I think we're all just a little bit fed up if you own him, of course, of how he's been performing on the pitch. And the eye test isn't good either. Four goals so far this season, hasn't scored in quite a long time now either. And any of us who picked him up around game week 15, or maybe it was 14, due to the rumours around Ollie Watkins being injured, will have really regretted that move. I know I have as well. So I have talked about him two game weeks in a row. I don't want to take too much time up talking about him this game week, but I think with Arsenal at home, if you can, and if you've got a free transfer to use, I think getting rid of him could be a pretty wise idea ahead of the next stretch of fixtures. Yes, game week 19 against Burnley is going to be a good one and Bournemouth in 21, but I think there are better strikers out there even cheaper strikers as well that I think we can rely on a little bit more than Darwin Nunez at this point. And despite the data, I'm pretty sick of him. And if I had a free transfer spare, I'd probably be looking at getting rid of him this game week. The second striker I'd be recommending getting rid of this game week is probably a really easy one, and that is Julian Alvarez. Now, the reason for that is, of course, he blanks in game week 18. Now, I think after that, the fixtures are looking really good, but the underlying data for a striker isn't exactly what you want to see. Now, a total XGI per 90 of over 0.5 is good, but really for a forward, you want to be seeing that XG a lot higher. And 0.27, whilst it's not absolutely awful, it isn't quite at the heights we really want to see someone who is playing currently up front for City. Now, obviously, Erling Haaland is a player that we expect to come back in game week 19, possibly game week 20, at which point Alvarez will probably recede back to the sort of false nine role or the number eight role in behind Haaland. Now, I think with Alvarez, in terms of the eye test, he's still a good player. Obviously, he's a very talented athlete and then a talented footballer. But in terms of FPL points and FPL returns at the moment, I think we can get better elsewhere. Now, I think another important factor is with the blank game week 18, I don't really think he's a player that I'd be 
shielding and hiding on my bench for one game week. I think there are other strikers out there at the moment that I would probably be looking at at around the same sort of price point as him. And this could be a really good opportunity to get rid of him and attack the strikers that are actually getting the goals at the moment. So enough waiting. Let's have a look at which strike I'd be recommending if you've not got him yet to bring in ahead of game week 18. So most of us already have Ollie Watkins, otherwise I'd be suggesting him as well. But if you've already got Ollie Watkins, the other player I'd be highly suggesting this game week would be Dominic Solanke. Now, obviously, it's still up in the air what's going on with game week 17 and the actual points, but he did score. So that is three goals in the last four games that he's played in. And the underlying data is looking much more encouraging for a striker. So 0.5 XG per 90 is exactly what you want to see. Bournemouth are starting to score a lot more goals and feel him a lot more regularly now as well so 6.8 million he's still cheaper than Julian Alvarez and a lot cheaper than Darwin so I would say that he is a pretty ideal prime candidate candidate to be bringing in ahead of both of those two at the moment nine goals already so far this season he's going along at about a goal every other game so he's matching up to the underlying data really well and the next two fixtures Nottingham Forest and Fulham are both good from an attacking point of view Tottenham Liverpool and West Ham after that not ideal but a talismanic striker like him I would back to score in any given game a bit like Ollie Watkins so a striker I'm more happy to own throughout any sort of fixture run is one of those who are on penalties, who are talismanic to the team. And if they're going to create a, a chance, it would fall to them more often than not. So I think even with the fixtures getting a little bit tougher after game week 20, I'd still be pretty happy to hold him throughout that. And 6.8 million is great value for a talismanic striker in a team that are just starting to really create some good underlying numbers and creating those goals as well. So Dominic Solanke would be very high in mind. If you've already got Ollie Watkins, he would be next in the list as strikers to bring in this game week. Another player I've got my eye on at the moment is Mohamed Kudus, and he is incredibly differential at under 5% owned at the moment as well. 6.7 million, very good value for money, and despite the data not being absolutely incredible, it's certainly not bad, and five goals, three assists already this season, especially considering he's a new signing and didn't really even start matches for West Ham until a few game weeks in, is a really good return. Now, he is going to be differential for the next few as well, because it is important to mention that he will be expected to go off to AFCON around game week 21. So he won't get the benefit of those two really good fixtures against Sheffield United and Bournemouth. However, due to that, he will remain incredibly differential. And I really don't mind the next three fixtures either. I think those two home games against Man United and Brighton could be an interesting differential to be targeting for two teams that are conceding quite a few goals at the moment. Now, Man United obviously did keep that clean sheet against Liverpool yesterday, but I still expect them to concede a fair few. Arsenal is a bad fixture. Let's not beat around the bush there. But Brighton as well have conceded in every single league game so far this season. So if you're looking for a differential midfielder for the next three game weeks and you don't mind having to make that transfer in game week 21 then Mohamed Kudus could be a really good differential option that other people are just simply not going to be going for because of the Game Week 21 issue when he goes off to AFCON. I would understand it if you're more than happy to just avoid him for the time being, and I probably will be too. But if you've got a short-term horizon, if maybe you've got a wild card up your sleeve in the next few game weeks as well, then Kudus could be really interesting, and I certainly wouldn't go against or put anyone off buying him for the next few if you think the upside is there in the short term. A player I'm monitoring very closely as a impending sell over the next few game weeks is Jamal Lascelles. Now he has been fantastic value for money over the last stretch of game weeks since Botman got injured. Regular 90 minutes, good few clean sheets and he got a goal during that time as well. So I do thank him for his services. However, I am worried about how long he's going to last in that starting lineup for Newcastle. Now that Botman was named on the bench in game week 17, came on for I think 10, 15 minutes at the end. So we know he's nearing a return. Now we'll get a lot more information in midweek during the Carabao Cup fixtures, whether Botman is close or not. But I think it's fair to say that time is running out on the sales. Now he might be lucky in this game week in particular, 
because Shah did pick up an injury in game week 17. So that actually might mean that Lascelles starts alongside Botman in game week 18 away at Luton. Now, I'm probably going to hold on to him for that reason, just in case he does start that game, because Luton away, yes, Luton are pretty good at home, but it's still a decent fixture for Newcastle. And there aren't many clean sheet options for defenders this game week. And I'd like a bit of time to assess my options. But I think overall, he's a player that we definitely need to monitor now. We need to have a plan for getting rid of, if not this game week, possibly in game week 19. And I just don't think he's going to be getting minutes in the long term from possibly next week onwards, maybe even this game week. Now, at 4.2 million, you are probably going to need to have a bit of money saved up, ready to upgrade him to someone a little bit more expensive. But there are a couple of options around his price point that you could be potentially looking at. I think overall, though, I would quite like the option of having another Newcastle defender in his place. And Botman is probably the ideal solution, if not Dan Byrne, who are both under 5 million they're both coming back from injuries now and you'd expect them to regularly be in the starting 11 once they regain full fitness. So those are two players I'm interested in for the time being. And I think Lascelles is probably going to stay in my team for one more game week in the hope that he starts against Luton. But after that, I'm probably going to have to look at selling. And it's just one that I wanted to flag in case you're relying on Lascelles to start over the next few game weeks as well. Now, Everton are a team that a lot of us are starting to have a quick look at now because they've kept, kept four clean sheets on the bounce, which is no mean feat. That is pretty incredible. And Dyche is also doing a very good job at Everton at the moment. Without that 10 point deduction, they comfortably in the top be in the top half so Everton are a team that maybe we should be looking at a little more closely now those four clean sheets on the bounce very very encouraging however I would urge maybe a little bit of caution on this now yes they've been really good recently but the fixtures over the next few if you want to look at the Everton defence, it's probably not the best run of fixtures for more clean sheets to come. Now, Spurs away. Now, we know how free-flowing and attacking Spurs are. They've got a lot of very good attacking assets. So I'd be surprised if Everton kept a clean sheet away from home at Tottenham. After that, straight into one of the worst fixtures out there at the moment, Man City. Now, if you're going for someone like Jordan Pickford, that could be interesting because even if they don't keep clean sheets in those games, he's still probably going to get a few save points in those two matches in particular. And then who knows if they do somehow get a clean sheet in either of those games, he's probably going to be very likely a candidate for maximum bonus. And then you're looking at a pretty big haul for Jordan Pickford there. So I would understand more the Jordan Pickford move than maybe other Everton defenders and the under data is also pretty encouraging as well so who knows maybe they get lucky and maybe they keep one or two clean sheets in this run however even after Tottenham and Man City are out the way away at Molyneux against Wolves may be the best chance of a clean sheet in the next four but then after that Aston Villa at home is going to be another difficult fixture for them yes Everton have surprised us this season and yes they have been very good and I think at some point this season, they're going to be incredible value for money, especially in defence. But for the time being, I would urge a little bit of caution. The fixtures coming aren't the best. And outside of Jordan Pickford, where you might be getting a few save points, maybe if you're lucky, you'll get a clean sheet out of him and therefore quite a large haul. I think outside of that, maybe now possibly isn't the time to be looking at them if you're trying to find the next defenders for clean sheets in the next few game weeks. That being said, Mikalenko and Bramf Branthwaite are both really good budget enablers in defence. And if you can afford to bench them for a few game weeks, they could be interesting options as yet. But I think overall, we can probably just avoid the Everton defence for the next two game weeks at least. And maybe you could start looking at them in game week 20 when they go up against Wolves away from home. So there you have it. Those are my transfer tips ahead of the game week 18 deadline. In the meantime, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated and it really does help me out. So that'd be an early Christmas present for me if you did subscribe. Now, also, if you have any players that I haven't recommended today that you'd like me to talk about, or of course, any dilemmas with your team ahead of the game week 18 deadline, please do feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to all of you before we hit the 
the Thursday deadline. I'll be back later on this game week with my team selection video, probably on Wednesday morning because we've got that Thursday deadline this week. So do make sure you get your teams locked in in time for that. And hopefully I'll see you back on my channel later this week. Thank <laughs> you.